There's fish. Yeah, baby. <laughs> oh, man. Dad, can we call that a double or no? I don't know if you can call that a double. Mine's already in the boat. Yours is a little bit bigger than mine. This is just a little guy here. Just a little guy. Still a lot of fun, though. He just hammered it. <laughs> hey, I'm Mark Romanek, and you're watching Fishing 401. Stick around. We're going to put some Lake Erie eaters in the box. We spend our time today blade bait fishing, and that's something you don't see a lot of people doing. Most of the traditional walleye guys out there are gonna use crankbaits, or they're gonna use live bait rigs or jigs, and some of those methods might have worked today, but the blade bait works exceptionally well for what we were doing. We were fishing in dirty water, there's a lot of vibration in the blade bait, and it really helps those fish find the bait when they can't see it very well. So in dirty water conditions, blade baiting will catch you more walleyes. Well, the presentation we're using to catch these fish today is called a blade bait. Now, what exactly is a blade bait? It's a chunk of metal with a chunk of lead on it. It's a very simple presentation, but it has a lot of vibration. And in this dirty water, what happens is we put it all the way down to the bottom, and we're lifting it up fairly aggressively, and it's making that vibration. Those walleyes are feeling it in their lateral line, and they might not necessarily be able to see it right away, but they can feel it right away. And then they come in and investigate. You know, when the water gets a little bit cleaner, another really good presentation out here is just a hair jig or a jig and a minnow. But with this dirty water, a blade bait is what gets it done. Whoa, little guy. One of Lake Erie's recent hatches. That's exactly where he needs to go, right back in the drink. Not enough meat on that fish. Jake, I think this is gonna be fast and furious today. I think our timing is just about perfect for these reef fish. fish. Wow. And that's about the size that I'm hoping that we get some eaters, just about this size right here, Jake. Just barely got him in the boat. And these males like this that are actively spawning in that 16, 18, 22 inch size, there should be just a pile of these fish on the reef today. And, uh, and that's what we're gonna target is these smaller fish. Not the kind of fish that people get too excited about as far as from a trophy standpoint, but from an eating standpoint, it doesn't get any better than that. That's a fish sandwich. You know, when you come out to Lake Erie to catch these walleyes on these reefs, there are so many different options for you. Like we said earlier, we're fishing in Ohio today, um, but there's some reefs in Michigan. There's also some reefs in Ontario. The really cool thing about your Lowrance graph is they're already on the mapping unit, just the base unit on your graph. To make it even easier, they have the actual reefs marked so you can see them just when you're out all the way zoomed out on your graph. And what you're looking for is a reef like the one we're on today, which is called the Niagara Reef. That's more of the popular reef complexes that are out here. Um, but what happens around the Niagara Reef is it's about 25 to 30 feet of water all the way around the reef. When it comes up, you'll actually see right on the top, it comes all the way up to eight feet of water. That's the water we're fishing. We're looking for that shallow water right on the top of the reef. Now don't get me wrong, there's fish that are on the outside edges of these, of these reef complexes, but the biggest major majority of these fish are right on the top of the reefs. You go right on your Lowrance graph and you can zoom out and you'll see them all marked on there. And then what you can do throughout a given day is you can just kind of go to a milk run of these reefs. You go to one, you find some fish on them, maybe there's no fish on that reef. That's okay, there's so many different reefs out there that sooner or later you're gonna find one that's just packed full of these male walleyes. Well, blade beats are kind of a unique presentation. We're vertical jigging these just pretty much straight over the side of the boat. Um, it's a contact style of fishing. What I mean by that is you want to fish them in contact with the bottom. 
Um, but what makes this a little bit more unique is that the blade beta course has got a little bit more vibration than other types of presentations. Now, why is that important? Well, if you take a look at the water today, you're going to see how dirty it is. I had a big blow here for several days, and Lake Erie just turned into chocolate milk. There's a fish. I hate getting interrupted by fish. It's just terrible. I'm trying to do an interview here. All the fish want to do is play. Oh, I farmed him. <laughs> Dad, I got a pretty good one on this. This is going to be a really good eater. Another one of those, you know, 18 inch fish, 17, 18 inch fish. Just a cookie cutter. That's a good one. That's, That's exactly what we're looking for right there. Most of the fish we've caught today have all been right around that same size. I know a lot of guys that like catching big walleyes, but I know more guys that just like putting walleyes in the freezer. When it comes to putting walleyes in the freezer, they don't get any better than that size right there. Special considerations provided by Eagle Claw, proudly made in America since 1925. Additional considerations provided by Fishhawk Electronics. Trolling without a fishhawk is called boating. That didn't take long. No, that one tunked it too, Dad. He was just was coming up on a tight line oh, and yeah, there he was. That's quality fish right there too. Pretty good fish, yeah. That's pretty good fish. That's the kind we want to keep right there. <laughs> that's the kind we want to keep. You don't get 6'5 and 260 pounds without eating a lot of walleyes, so this one's going to become a fish sandwich. Oh, there's a fish. I wonder if you're a good one, Dad. Yeah, that's a little bit better fish. Like Jake was saying, these are all reef fish. That's oh. a very good fish, Jake. All right, get the net this on that one. one we want to definitely get a net on, probably. These are all reef fish. What most people don't realize about Lake Erie is that all of these walleyes, all of them. Kind of rolled around on it. He ate all over on it, but he ate it. He got it right in his mouth. Nice fish, Dad. All of these fish are, uh, are wild reared fish. There's no stocking going on in Lake Erie. And so it's really critically important that these fish are successfully spawning up on the reefs here. That is still a male fish, but it's a lot nicer quality than what we've been catching on average. Well, ideally, this is the caliber of fish that we're looking for here. Now, we're fishing in Ohio waters today. In Ohio waters, during the month of April, you're only allowed four fish per day. The rest of the year, you can catch six fish a day. Now, why do they only have four fish a day at this time period? It's because these fish are spawning, and the Ohio DNR is giving these fish a little bit of credit, a little bit of protection, if you will, during the spawning season. We think that's a very good thing. In fact, quite honestly, we think Ohio DNR is really doing it right when it comes to walleye management in the Great Lakes region. You know, when it comes to Great Lake fishing, it normally means lots of money. And what I mean by that is it means big boats and lots of equipment. The cool thing about this reef fishing, you can see behind me, we're not that far offshore. You can come out here in a relatively small boat and have a rod and a reel and be very successful catching lots of walleyes. You might find it interesting, the biology associated with these fish. The males come up to the spawning reefs and they pretty much stay there for a month or more. The females come up, they actually spawn in a very short window of time, 24 hours to 48 hours, and then they leave the shallow water and retreat back to the deeper water. Meanwhile, the males just stay there. And the reason why the males stay there is because not all the females spawn at the same time. There's a trickle of uh, females coming up on the reefs constantly and dropping back off the reefs constantly. And that's why when you fish the reef, you rarely catch the females, you're primarily catching the smaller, more aggressive males. Man, we've been having an absolute riot today. <clears throat> Every once in a while, you catch a, a little better quality fish here. Oh, that's a oh, good yeah, that's, fish, that's a good fish. That's a nice male. The average male here is going to be only about 15 to 18 inches, but occasionally we'll get lucky and get these nicer fish like this one right here. Oh, that's a beautiful <laughs> fish right there. Nice fish. I think I just upgraded my fillets in the freezer just a little bit. <laughs> I love it. Ooh, baby. Man, <laughs> walleyes don't get much better for the table than that one right there. Lake Erie's finest. If you're gonna come down here and do this kind of stuff, you're gonna be looking at the month of April. And ironically, when Jake and I came down here, we actually came to troll. Um, but with the water was so muddy and the trolling bite was so bad, we decided to shift, you know, shift gears and do something a little bit different. These reef fish can be caught even when the water is off color. So it gives you a really great option if you show up here to troll, but conditions aren't good for trolling, you could still get some great fish for the freezer. What we're dealing with today is pretty much ideal conditions. What you're looking for is what they call that walleye chop. And the reason you want that walleye chop is because you want a nice steady drift. What I'm doing here is I basically just set the boat sideways and let the wind 
drift the boat over top of these reefs. And all I'm doing is I'm using my XI-5 motor guide on the bow here just to keep the boat horizontal to the waves. That way I'm covering my front half of the boat and Dad's covering his back half of the boat and we're not fishing exactly the same water. I'm kind of in a difficult position right now. I've got three pretty high quality fish in the live well and I don't want to stop fishing. <laughs> this is a lot of fun. So I don't want to just get my fourth one and quit. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let this fish go and, uh, and then I can continue to fish. And at some point later in the day here when it starts to slow down, maybe I'll just stop and uh, with number four and call it good. But for right now, I'm going to let that one go. That was a legal fish, would have been good on the table, but I want to keep fishing. So we're getting ready to go back up and make another pass over top of this reef. And the one thing that you want to do is just kind of a common courtesy thing. Is we're fishing this really shallow water, eight feet of water. When I go back up to make my next pass, I kind of make a, a wide around the reef and then come right back down. That way I'm not taking my motor and driving right over top of fish only in eight feet of water. It's just a respect thing because you can see behind me there's a whole bunch of other guys wanting to catch these fish too. We happen to be in Ohio waters today, but there's other places that you can do this. For example, there's reefs in Michigan waters where you could duplicate what we're doing today. And there's actually even a few reefs in Ontario waters as well. So any place in the Western Basin where you find shallow water reefs, you're probably gonna find walleye spawning there in April. Special considerations provided by Bait Rigs Tackle, America's innovator of fine fishing products. Additional considerations provided by the Ultimate Sports Show Tour, Michigan's premier sports shows. You know, about 25 years ago, Offshore Tackle came to me and some other distinguished anglers and asked us if we could help them develop an inline planer board. Well, the board I have in my hand here, the OR12 side planer, was the result of that research. Very, very quickly, Offshore became the leader in the industry. They have the most popular inline planer board out there. And the reason I think that that is is because Offshore is one of those companies that's very, very detail-oriented. They want their products to be right, and so they're constantly innovating. They're constantly improving their product. Now, over the years, the OR12 has seen a few uh, improvements, if you will. And just recently, for 2017, there's a couple new improvements that I think you're going to want to know about. First and foremost, the tattle flag system that's on here. The tattle flag has been around for some time. It's tried, it's tested, it's true. Folks like it because it allows them to detect a bite when they're trolling slow or if they're trolling in rough seas. But one of the complaints that we got about the tattle flag, it's a spring activated articulating flag system. And what would happen if you ran, oh, say a deep diving crankbait is the flag would bend down a little bit like this just from the resistance of the lure. So what we needed to do is add a little bit more spring tension settings to the board. And that's exactly what we've accomplished. If you take a look at the flag here, there's a tab on the flag now and it has four additional holes in it. So by simply moving that spring from hole to hole to hole, we can increase the spring tension on the tattle flag. So now the tattle flag works for every application in trolling. It's a great thing. The next thing that we've done is you notice that the arm here, the linkage arm goes down at an angle and comes out more towards the bottom of the board. Essentially what that has done is lowered the toe point at the bottom of the board. Now why is that important? By lowering this toe point, what it does, normally the board would ride in the water with a nose up orientation like this. By lowering the, the back toe point, it brings the board down more horizontal. That gives the board more outward reach or a better planing ability. So essentially what's happened is that the best planing board on the market now planes even better. So the tattle flag system makes that possible for you as well. You'll also notice that on the bottom of the board, there's a channel back here that has a weight in it. Historically, this weight has been fixed in the board. You couldn't move it. Now we've taken out the channel and all you have to do to remove this weight is remove the screw, you can slide the weight forward and then put the screw back in. Well, what does that do? Normally the board rides in the water with a little nose up orientation like this. By running the weight further forward, it brings the nose down a little bit. And what that does is gives the board more outward planing ability and allows it to pull much heavier gear. So in other words, you can pull things like tadpole divers or light core line or copper line by simply moving the weight forward. Now, if you leave the weight in the normal position, the way it comes from the factory, that's perfect for normal gear. But if you're going to pull heavy gear, you're going to want to move that weight forward. The other thing that you can look at here is what if you already have a tattle flag? What if you want to retrofit tattle flags um, to improve them for the new feature? You can do that by doing nothing more than buying this new flag and using your existing hardware and you can retrofit the boards you have right now to be upgraded tattle flags. What you'll need is a 1 16th inch drill bit and you're going to take right down here where my finger's at on the bottom of the black tab you're going to drill a 1 16th inch hole and put the screw eye in there, run your linkage through there, put the new flag on the board, and you're good to go. You're upgraded 2017 standards. 
Well, I got another one, Dad. This one isn't very big. You know what? Something that's really cool about what this, this reef bite's all about is just the sheer number of boats that you're fishing around. And it's okay, you know, there's all those times where you hear you don't want to fish next to other people. But because these fish are on the reef and they're all spread over the top of this reef, and everyone's staying relatively vertical, it's you can fish right next to all these other boats. It kind of makes it fun. You see a lot of guys out there, and just fishing around a crowd sometimes is pretty cool. Another quality fish. They come up pretty quick when you're only in eight feet of water, Dad. Yeah, it doesn't take long to get them to the boat, that's for sure. Um, no landing net on this one, Jake. Just grab him gently here. Whoa, little waves toss me over. Unhook this puppy and get him right back in the water. Lake Erie's finest, a good eater. We'll catch him next year. You know, the cool thing about the setup of the rod and the reel that we're using today is that if you're a jig fisherman, you probably already have all the gear in your garage ready to do this blade bait fishing. All I'm using today is a 6'3 medium action rod. I think my dad has a 6'6. So anywhere between that six foot, you know, six and a half foot medium action rod, that's really what you're looking for. You know, a nice soft tip, but a nice fast tip at the same time. But we got that teamed up with some braid, and braid is super important for this because it's very much a contact style presentation. And what we do with the braid is it just allows with no stretch in the line to be able to feel every little detail. We can feel that blade bait tunk the bottom on the gravel, and we can also feel when we lift up, and of course we can feel when we get a bite on. It's a basic presentation. You know, what you're looking for is, is anywhere around that $100 package range. You know, a rod like this, you know, with the rod and the reel combination is about $100 package so and not super expensive and it's going to be a rod that you can use not only for this style of fishing but when you're ready to go do some vertical jigging it's the rod to do that as well. Additional considerations provided by Procure ruthlessly effective bait suds. <laughs> the better fish too. Oh yeah dad this I is a good one. I think that's one I want to put a landing net on Jakers. <laughs> nice little eater. Just always pop off. There we go. There we go. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Another good eater. We're gonna get this one back. You know, one other key piece of information that we haven't shared yet is that we have a fluorocarbon leader tied to the braid. We talked about braid earlier, but the fluorocarbon leader is really important. And don't get me wrong, it has nothing to do with visibility. In this dirty water, um, we don't really have to worry about the fish seeing the line. What's nice about the fluorocarbon is it has a little bit of a memory to it. So when you're jigging this, this blade bait in the water, it doesn't come back and catch on itself. Now you still have to be careful with the blade bait because what it likes to do is it likes to come up and then it likes to actually catch the hook on the line like this. But with the fluorocarbon leader, that little bit more memory that you get versus the braid that has no memory, um, it stops that from happening a little bit more. Also what I like to do is I like to put a cross lock snap on there and that just allows me to change out colors throughout the day. Uh, maybe when it gets a little bit sunnier today I might want to change to a little bit different color or vice versa. So uh, the cross lock snap allows me to do that. I tied the fluorocarbon to the braid with a knot that's called a double uni knot. That's a knot that I use all the time. Uh, if you want to learn how to tie that knot, one really cool thing, you can go right online. There's a website called animatedknots.com. You can go right onto that website and learn how to tie that knot. Uh, to me, that's where I learned how to tie all of my knots. It's the easiest way, but it's a knot that you're going to use not only for this style of fishing, but a lot of different presentations when it comes to tying your braid to your fluorocarbon leader. Well, you might have noticed that Jake and I are actually putting fish scent on our blade baits, and there's a good reason for that. Um, in this murky water, we're trying to do everything in our power to be able to make these baits more available to the fish. You know, the vibration gets their attention, the flash, of course, gets their attention, but having some scent is the closing deal, and what that does is when these fish get close, it smells good, it looks good, it feels good, they eat it. Uh, and we've been recommending Procure for some time now. It's a gel-based formula, and the reason we like it is once you put it on the lure, it stays on the lure. Most fish scents are liquid-based, and as soon as you put it on, put it in the water, it washes right off and it's pointless. So the gel formulas stay on the lures better and uh, last longer, helps us catch more fish. There's one, Dad. Now I'm not saying you're wrong, Dad, about the two rod jigging, but I'm one rod jigging. And uh, you might have a couple more fish than me, but to me, controlling the boat, trying to stay nice and horizontal to the waves. Let's see, get him up here. To me, it's a little bit easier staying in contact to bottom with just one rod. 
So what I'd recommend is, you know, once you feel comfortable fishing two rods, absolutely fish two rods. Um, but when you're first learning how to do this style of blade baits, it's a little bit different than just fishing a jig. It's kind of a, a feel. You'll get the feel. It takes a little bit. So once you get that feel, you go to two rods. But make sure that you learn the right presentation before you go into two rods. Well, the presentation that we've chosen today is something called blade baiting. And Jake's talking a little bit about how a blade bait's got a lot of vibration. It does, and that's a key, because if you take a look at the water quality today, clarity of the water's not very good. We have about six to 10 inches of visibility. And so that vibration is critical that it sucks the fish in, they feel it, they come in close. Um, but one of the mistakes I think people make when they blade bait is they fish them too aggressively. If you snap the blade bait and then let it fall on a slack line, they often tangle. What happens is that the hooks from the, the lure itself get caught on the leader, and you're constantly fouled you're not fishing very efficiently. So what we prefer to do is something we call tight lining. Drop it to the bottom, lift it just so we can feel it vibrate, and then drop it back to the bottom on a tight line. We're never snapping it so hard or fishing it so aggressively that there's slack in the line. And what that does is allows us to control the vibration of the bait, but also to keep it from flipping over and the line tangling all the time. Well, Jake made an interesting comment about the reefs. He said that we were catching the fish on the tops of the reef, and it's true. Uh, but there's a reason why that happens. The tops of the reefs are pretty much washed clean of any silt. So there's good gravel there, and that's the prime spawning habitat. That's the best spawning habitat. As you go down off the reefs and you get into a little bit deeper water along the edges of it, there's more siltation, and that's less desirable for spawning for these fish. So that's why these walleyes are all up on top doing what comes natural. And that's what I'm doing, doing what comes natural. Oh, this is a good fish, Jake. I'm gonna to have to land this one, man. Do you want the net on that one, Yeah, man? that is a high quality fish. These are exactly what we were hoping to catch today. What a beautiful fish. Excellent. <laughs> Love these fish. Beautiful fish. You know, walleyes have got a reputation for not being a great fighting fish. Actually, that's not true. When you catch these fish on light tackle, like we're using light spinning rods and, and light action line, they're a lot of fun to catch. And they happen to be the best eating fish on the table you're ever gonna find. Walleyes, my favorite fish. Closed captioning is provided by Fishhawk Electronics. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, Yakima Bait, Starcraft Marine, Jay's Sporting Goods, Cisco Fishing Systems, Smooth Moves, Precision Trolling Data, Niagara Falls, USA, Motor Guide Electric Motors, and Lawrence Electronics. From what I can tell, this is a little bit better fish, but nope. <laughs> they just fight a lot better when you hook them that way. <laughs> they fight harder that way. Yeah.